The excitement. And you know what? The excitement comes because Jesus is alive. Amen. Jesus is alive. Let me do a little bit of Sunday school teaching this morning. Because Sunday school is where we learn, we teach, we hear as the education. So let me do a little educating this morning. Did you know we're still in Easter? We're still in Easter. Because Easter goes on for 50 days. 50 days. Until we get to Pentecost. And so, yes, Easter Sunday is over. Resurrection is still here because Jesus is alive. The stone has been rolled away. The tomb is empty. We're still in Easter season. This is the third week of the Easter season. The first two weeks, you, you get really a, a coming to Jesus moment. They're, they're seeing who He is, the resurrected Lord. And you see Mary, and she comes to the tomb, and she's like, who took my Savior? And what did the angel say? The angel says, why are you afraid? And then Jesus Himself comes to Mary, and, and, and He says, hey, go tell my disciples. So she runs and she tells the disciples. Peter and they're running. They get there. Jesus said, here I am. Here I am. And what does he say? He says, go and tell. So really this week to set the stage, we're at the week to where Jesus is sitting on the beach. And he tells them, he said, did you catch anything? And I said, no. And he says, go out. Go fishing. We're at the end of John chapter 20. And as we're there and we're sitting there, this is kind of in the Gospels of where we're at. Just kind of giving you a prelude to, to what is happening. Because we're going to be talking about something else. And we'll give you a prelude of where we're at in the Easter story. So Jesus is on the beach. He's talking to them. And, and he has breakfast with them after they catch 130 fish. They catch so many fish that, and they're so big. But guess what? There's something that happens. The nets don't break. The nets don't break. That's a whole sermon right there. That's a hard whole sermon right there because with Jesus tying the nets together, they don't break. Amen? That's something you can hold on when Jesus has a net in your life. When Jesus puts things together, it's a bond that doesn't break. Hallelujah this morning. I tell you what, I, I, if anybody had revised your I'm, I'm kind of got a little excitement. Some of you are like, man, why are you so excited about it? Because Jesus is doing this stuff. Just like, just like Bill said. He said, he said, you can't make this stuff up. God's doing this. God's the one that brought us together today. God's the one that's opened the doors across the road to where you open the door and you just think you're waiting for people to come and you meet a neighbor and you're talking, you share and pray. God does these things. She actually said, she said, guess what? She said, I believe God brought you out that door. Don't make this stuff up. So continue the story. Jesus is there. He's, he's eating with them. And he says, Peter, do you love me? Now remember, Peter messed up, right? Peter denied Jesus three times. So he's kind of down. He's kind of down. Anybody down? He's kind of down. Well, guess what happens? Jesus says, do you love me? Peter's like, yeah, I love you. He says again, do you love me? Yeah, I love you. Third time, Jesus says, do you really love me? If you do, feed my sheep. Feed them. This morning, I'm here to tell you, by the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, if you are saved through faith, there is no condemnation. You are not condemned. The devil's defeated. The power of sin is defeated. Then ask me a question. I have a question I want to ask. If we're living in the power of the resurrection, right? And we believe in the power. We believe Jesus is alive. We believe the sin, death, and the devil have been defeated. Amen? Amen. Then why do we walk around defeated? Why do we walk around defeated? Why do we walk around like men? I'm 
Congress. It's, it's in a mess. America's in a mess. Sin, corruption, death. Influence of, of people saying, well, you know what, you, you can be whoever you want, you can, you can do whatever you want, and, and, and you know what, if you want to be this person, you can be that person, because maybe you were that person all along. All the garbage that's out there. But you know what? Jesus is alive. Jesus died for people that they didn't even know why we were still yet sinners. Jesus died for us. Do you believe that, church? Amen. Do you believe that? Then why do we live defeated? Why do you let the devil get you down? Why do you let people bring you down? Quit living a defeated life. If Jesus is alive, start living the life. Living and breathing and doing. Wait a minute. They call that something. Living, breathing, and acting like Christ. There's a word for that. It's worth that. Holiness. Holiness. Christ-likeness. Sanctification. Being set apart. It's a process. A practice. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have a routine that you go through every day? Raise your hand. You have a routine. Now the ones that didn't raise your hand, you have a routine, but you don't even know it. You have a routine. Because I guarantee you, you wake up, you do the same thing every day, and it's a routine. You've practiced it so many times, that it becomes a routine. Well, church, that is what holiness is. We should live and breathe and practice holiness, Christ-likeness every day. Set ourselves apart so that there's difference. Because there is a difference in the sanctified, in the life of Christ. Amen? Amen. There's a difference. And we're supposed to be different. Now we're different in many ways. How many of us here have a college education? Good. That makes us different. How many have high school? Yeah. How many were in the military? Thank you so much for that. Amen? So see, there's differences all around. I love ball. Love it. All kinds of ball. I love football, I love basketball, and guess what? I love that boring sport that's played with a bat and a ball and a glove. <laughs> love it. How can you watch nine innings of that? It's so boring. But think about it. There's something that's in common with all of those things. For them to really be able to be good at what they do, they have to practice. Got it? You have to practice. To be good at your job, you have to practice. You have to learn new skills. You have to get updated. Church is the same thing. We must practice God. We must live for God every day. Amen. Romans 8.1 I'll read from the English Standard Version. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. If you repent, trust, and believe, there's no condemnation. Quit listening to the lies of the devil. If you ask for forgiveness, repent, and believe, there is no condemnation. I'm going to steal from Bill. Tell your neighbor there's no condemnation. I've been forgiven. There's a, it's, it's over. Then why in the world if Jesus, look, follow with me just for a minute. If Jesus forgives, and we're supposed to forgive as Jesus forgives, as we're practicing being like Christ. Then why do we forgive others? Well, 
you went to the altar, I saw you get angry. <coughs> you got angry. Ah, there's no, no, you went to the altar and, and there's no reason you should be acting like that. First of all, guess what? That's not your job. That's not your job. That's between them and Christ and their salvation, your salvation, it has nothing to do with your neighbor. Hopefully, your neighbors are on their knees and they're praying and helping you. It's called discipleship. Therefore, go and make disciples. And baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And guess what? There's nowhere there that it says, it's thank you, God. It doesn't say preacher only. It says all disciples go and make. And the actual Hebrew, the actual Aramaic there, is not just go. It's why you're going. Why you're already doing what you're doing. Why you're going to the grocery store. Why you're picking in your garden. It's why you are, are doing whatever you're doing. It's while you're doing it, you're making disciples by living and practicing for Christ. Because it's all about practice. Amen? Amen. I believe it. I believe it with all my heart. Because, because guess what? The devil is going to keep at you. He's going to be there. He's been defeated, but he's going to be there. And he's going to continue to try to get in. And we get so comfortable with Easter and Christmas. And we get so happy with revival. I'm on a spiritual high. Everything's wonderful. Woo! I'm so excited. Guess what? The devil's right there. The devil's right there. But we get laxed. We get comfortable. And we're like, oh, you know what? I'm so comfortable. I'm so far for God. Church is so far for God. Man, woo -hoo! I'm excited. You know what we do? We say, you know what? That devotion, I can skip that. Everything's going great. Woo! Revival. I can skip that for a while. I can stop praying. I can stop reading my Bible. Hmm. So, this is what I want you to do. Someone please turn to the chapter and verse that says the devil is going to stop picking on you. Somebody, chapter verse. Somebody turn to where it says the devil is going to stop picking on you. And, not there. Somebody next. Please show me the chapter and the verse that says there's not going to be any trouble in the world. Chapter and verse, somebody show me. Point it out. Because we're going by God's word, right? We're supposed to live and breathe by God's word. It's not in there. Oh, okay. So somebody please show me the chapter and verse that says we're done. We're a finished product. Anybody? Hmm. Then to me, that means we need to keep practicing. We need to keep reading and studying and believing and acting and living. If, if we're not done, we need to keep learning. We need to keep learning what it means to be kind, patient, loving. Gentleness, self-control. Hmm. I think that's somewhere in the Bible. It's called something. Love, gentleness, kindness, goodness, self-control. What's that called? Wait a minute. Fruits and Spirit. And guess what? Does it say there that that's just from select few? No. No, it doesn't. In 
fact, it says that all Christians should be practicing love, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. You get it, church? Did you hear what I said? We need to be practicing. We need to be applying it. Because let me tell you this, church, it takes practice. It takes courage. It takes devotion. It takes getting in your word. It takes getting in your closet to be patient. talking about it for weeks. But you know, sometimes you get a letter that says something you're not prepared for. I know what that feels like. Last year this time, I want to be completely honest with you. Last year this time, I sent out a resume to all 50 states. All 50 states in October. I got phone calls from California, Florida, South Carolina, Alaska. I actually had a digital interview in Alaska. Praise the Lord, I'm not in Alaska. I love the people up there, but I couldn't handle darkness for six months. But 13 times, 13 times, the church board said, we're going to go to somebody else. We're going to go 13 times. I finally was like, that's it. I'm done. I go, Walmart, I can do something. Yeah, right there. Bound his head. He said, Dad, it's not time. Be patient. You have to practice the fruits of the Spirit every day and be reminded that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? Then all of a sudden in June, I got the phone call and it was from a guy from Pittsburgh and I said, okay. I'm a new DS. I really don't know what's going on, but you look good to me. I said, praise God, somebody thinks I look good. Then you guys were praying. And then in September, I come in shorts and a t-shirt. I thought that was over. Why am I telling you all this? Because it takes practice. It takes faith. It takes believing in Jesus every day. Because God's not done yet. God's not done yet, church. And the devil's not done either. And it's time to take a stand and say, Devil, you are stomped out. And I'm going to live for Christ. And my family's going to live for Christ. And there is no condemnation in those that love Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you believe that, church? Amen. Why is it so important to be on fire for Jesus? Because we need to love Him with all our heart. That's why holiness, faith, belief must be prayer, read, live, share, repeat. You get it? Holiness and faith, it means believe, prayer, read, live, share, trust, repeat. And you keep repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. Because there's days that you might forget. When everything's going rough, when everything's going tough, you have to repeat it and live it and believe it. And she's just fine. <laughs> she is fine. Doesn't bother me. Psalms 103 verse 10 says, he does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us for our iniquities. For high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards us who fear him. As far as from the east to the west, 
your transgressions are not remembered. Church, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God doesn't remember my failures, my sins. When I ask Him to forgive me, and I believe and I trust and I live for Him, He has got it, and He doesn't remember it. And church, we need to let it go too. If God can forgive, we must forgive because He forgave us. Amen. End of story. Oh, and guess what? It's time to practice it and live it. Amen? John chapter 9 verse 5 says, Jesus refers to Himself as the light of the world, but in Matthew 14, listen to this. Jesus said, You are the light of the world. And a town built on a hill cannot be hidden. In the same way, let your light shine before others. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Don't let Satan... Wait a minute, church. Wait a minute. Just wait a minute. I know some people. I know some people that have let Satan their light out. You notice I said, they let Satan. Because Satan can't blow your out light out if you don't let him. Amen. Satan can't blow your light out unless you let him. Church, quit letting Satan blow your light out. Because he can't do it. The devil can't make you do a thing. Your friends can't make you do a thing. You're the one that chooses to do it. I had a friend. I had a friend. We were in high school and we were, we were playing. And we were on a retreat. And he started to jump over the fire. That was a smart move. It's going well. He was doing great. Everything was going fine. Well, guess what? The wind blew. He tried to jump over the fire again. Yeah, he's in the hospital. Skin grass all over. His mom comes and starts trying to sue everybody. Saying it was our fault. The judge says, sometimes you just can't help stupid. <laughs> As a pastor, I can't wear that shirt, but there's a shirt that says, sometimes you just can't help stupid. I don't think I'd go out and wear that shirt. But sometimes you just can't. You know what? There's one thing I want to get around this morning. There is no condemnation through Jesus Christ who strengthened us through the Holy Spirit. God is the victory. Praise Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can we gather together in prayer? Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for this moment. We thank you so much for everything that you do. And now, Father God, as we close this service, Father God, Lord, help us to continue what has happened in revival. Help us to continue all of the things that are going on. And Father God, help us to live a life that is full of, of, of love and, and more and peace and grace and mercy. It comes through you, Jesus Christ. For there is no condemnation through you in Jesus Christ, the Lord. Now, Father God, we pray that you'll be with us, that you'll go with us. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you stand with me? I can't be me without giving us an opportunity. Revival is here. God is here. There's no condemnation. But you know what that goes for? That's for those that have confessed and asked Jesus Christ to forgive them. There is nothing, nothing to me but God can't save you.
You can never be too dirty. There's nothing that you have done that God cannot and will not forgive you from. Do you believe that, church? Amen. Then it's time for us to believe that. It's time for us to act. If God is speaking to you, just come. Before I say anything else. Just come. Drag somebody with you if you want to. It's okay. It's perfectly, perfectly okay. <coughs> then receive this blessing. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are blessed. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.